that's a big one. So this fish is just kind of sitting on the edge of this rip wrap. This rip wrap bank here's got a few uh, few stumps on it, and uh, I was just cranking this Yozuri 3DB mid diver down through there, and she just absolutely stopped it. And as you see, nice healthy fish, pretty fish. So kind of what's going on here, as you can tell, this is a little bit of a steep bank. You got the rip wrap along the edge of the water. It comes out and drops off, and I'm just taking this six to eight foot diving crankbait throwing it up there on the bank and cranking it down. And a lot of those fish kind of seem to be right where the rip wrap stops and makes the natural bottom. And so I just want to take this, this crankbait and kind of bounce it down those rocks and make contact with the bottom to uh, trigger a reaction strike. We had a cold front come through about two days ago and these fish are a little sluggish. And so that reaction strike, I think bumping the bottom, that deflection is key to getting these fish to trigger to bite. You know, so a lot of times on these rip wrap banks, they a lot of them look the same and they look the same for a long way. And you know, rip wrap is, is pretty common all around the country. And some of these stretches can be literally miles long, and there's little key areas in the rip wrap. Well, it, it's not very efficient to graph those areas and, and stir them up, especially when these fish are only sitting in six or eight foot of water. So, one of the things that I like to do with this crankbait is just kind of feel my way down the rip wrap, meaning I'm using the crankbait to contact the bottom. This particular bank where the natural bottom meets the rip wrap is, is where these fish seem to be sitting. It also has a few stumps on it. And so I'm using the, that crankbait to actually feel where those fish are gonna be positioned. And it's, it's a pretty effective way to cover a lot of water. And then when you feel that, that key area where you think you could get a bite, where you come in contact with a stump or a bigger rock, or it drops off the end of that rip wrap, I may throw in a little bit of a pause, or I may try to get a hard deflection off of one of those stumps or something like that to, to trigger those reaction bites. One of the keys to rip wrap, rip wrap is obviously a, a, a very popular thing around the country. Gunnersville has kind of really exposed the fact that fish really do get on rip wrap really well. And, you know, I think one of the keys to that is during this time of year, we just came off the cold front. So, you know, we're, we're in late fall, fixing to go into winter. Um, just had our first major cold front. That water's cold. Well, those rocks absorb the sun. And so I think that's a key thing. Those fish will pull up on those rocks to, uh, to kind of warm up. You know, their, their metabolism is driven by water temperature. And so they seek out that little bit warmer water and, and the rip wrap can, can play a big key in that all the way, you know, from late fall, all the way through early spring, right before they go on bed. They'll, they'll use that rip wrap to pull up on and sun on because those rocks really absorb a lot of heat. And so you may have to cover a lot of rip wrap to figure out exactly where the fish are at on it and figure out your little key stretches and you know do that with a, a jerk bait or a crank bait, something like that to, to cover that water and figure out exactly where those fish are hanging. And, and then you'll find over time that you can go back to those places. If there's a little anomaly, say the rip wrap steps out a little bit or it's just a little higher, a little rise or something like that underwater that those fish are keying on. Well, you can you know, bank that and go back to that and you can find those can be productive, you know, productive areas throughout the winter and, and spring um, to be able to go catch fish on. And so, you know, just, just searching out the areas that, uh, that the fish live at on the rip wrap is, uh, is a key thing and, and that's why I like to do it with you know a, a deep diving crankbait. Obviously when, when I'm crankbait fishing on these um, these kind of banks 
I want to match my crankbait to the depth. Some, sometimes the fish may be up a little shallower, crank it with a square bill, they may step out a little deeper, depending on how steep the bank is. And you just kind of match your crankbait to where you're making contact with those rocks all the way through the strike zone. And, and really pay attention as to, to where the cover is, where the anomalies are and things like that, and where the fish are actually holding up on them. You know, when it comes to a crankbait setup, with this, you know, I'm throwing 12 pound Yozuri T7. Typically always, you know, 10, 10 to 12 pound line. I like either a five or a six gear ratio reel for this. Just something that I can move water with, but without having to move the bait too fast. You know, it's, it's really hard to slow your retrieve down with a fast reel, but you can speed you can speed your retrieve up effectively with a slow reel. So that's why I typically reach for a five or a six gear ratio when I'm covering a lot of water fishing these riprap banks. You know, for me, a good all around rod is, is just a standard seven foot medium heavy rod. Um, you can use them for light jigs, Texas rigs, spinner baits, things like that. Well, I like this rod cranking this mid depth crankbait along the rip wrap because it gives me a little bit of extra feel. I can feel my way through what's on the bottom. It's just a little more sensitive. So the little bit stiffer rod allows me to really load up on those fish as I'm moving at them and, and keep them pinned until I can kind of get them under control a little bit and, and get them coming towards the boat. And then obviously I can play them how I need to play them based on how they've got the bait or how I think they've got the bait. Fishing is very situational, and when I'm cranking, I typically start out with a fairly, you know, I would say a, a medium speed retrieve, and then if I feel like I'm fishing through an area and not getting any bites, um, I may slow that retrieve down or I may speed that retrieve up um, and, and just kind of play with it a little bit to see if I can figure out the exact speed that the fish want it to react. With a crankbait, I pretty much always want to be hitting the bottom to get that reaction strike. And the speed of the retrieve also plays a key in that, you know, how hard the bait deflects off of something, or if the fish just really isn't in the mood to really chase something, you may have to slow that retrieve down. Um, if you're looking for just a pure reaction strike, you may actually have to speed up a little bit to get those harder deflections and, and trigger those fish into biting. But they're, they're kind of temperamental, honestly. And, and so it, you have to kind of play with it through, day to day or even throughout the day to see exactly what the fish want. And once you figure out exactly what speed they want the bait, they'll let you know. I mean, they're gonna tell you, you'll start getting bites, um, you know, especially if you fish through an area that you know has fish on it. You know, just change your retrieve up a little bit and, and figure out exactly what speed they want it. And I think you'll see a big uptick in the number of bites you get. So, you know, this time of year in the fall, the bait's typically fairly small. So when I'm looking for a, a mid diving crankbait here, to fish this, you know, I, I'm looking for something that's not great big bait. I want a bait that's more natural size to what the fish are actually feeding on right now. And I think this Yozuri 3DB Bend Diver does a really good job of imitating bait fish in the fall uh, and, and even through the winter. Because for whatever reason, the bait typically tends to be a lot smaller in the fall than it is in the summer. And so this, this for me, when I'm starting out winter time, late fall, early spring, anything like that, when the water temperatures are cool. I'm gonna reach for a little bit smaller body to start with. And, and then I may play with that, you know, different sizes, depending on what the fish are telling me. If I just don't feel like I'm getting the bites I should be getting, then I'm gonna to go to a little bit bigger or maybe even a little bit smaller crankbait. There we go. So back here behind me on the bank, you can see there's a couple of posts, old dock posts right here. And that fish, I cranked it down the rip wrap and came up to those dock posts and, and bounced off that one outside dock post and that's where that, that fish was sitting. And this looks like it's actually a pretty good fish. Yeah. Oh. And, and so see that fish was the perfect example of, of paying attention. Obviously I can see these right here sticking up. Um, you can't always see the little anomalies, and, but that played a key in catching that fish. It was something a little different along this bank 
and and that's where that fish was sitting right on that outside post and it's just it's something that breaks up just this entire bank that's just riprap and so you know those those are things you really need to pay attention to whether you can see them or, or you can't you know those are those are going to be where the majority of your fish are going to be sitting